What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Brad's Bioact the Builds, where I do step by step, do it yourself, naturalistic animal enclosures, primarily focusing on reptiles and amphibians. I know in the last video I said I'd be wrapping up this enclosure, but unfortunately, I won't be doing that today, mainly because I didn't want to do you all a disservice by skimping on some of the details that got me this far. For today's video, I'll be going over how I did the ceiling from the lights, the fogger, the mist king, and the fans. If you want early access to my content, check out the link below, where I recently launched a Patreon, along with some pretty cool bonus footage and real-time progress of any current build that I'm working on. This is going to be part 3 of the series, so make sure you check out the first part where I build the enclosure, install the water tub, and go over the fast drain and fill easy system I created. Part 2 I go over putting in place the XPS board and using a game changer product, Polygem Zoo Poxy. I apply a dry brush method to tie everything together and then I go over a detailed explanation on how I created this drip wall. I'll link both videos in the description below. Alright, let's go! Primed and painted black, select areas where I'll be working. Prepped where I wanted my double dome basking lights to go, using magnets to kind of line it out so I can see it on the inside where my target zone was going to be for a basking platform. I do this so I don't have to make my cuts upside down. Once I liked the placement, just went ahead and traced it out. Drilled a hole to the inside of that line so I can go ahead and fit my jigsaw blade right into it. Then just proceeded cutting out the line I traced out. Sanded down a minor imperfection where I started my cut. Got an idea for where I wanted my second basking zone to be. Utilizing the same method as before with magnets. For this basking side, I'll be using two Flukers 8.5 domes with dimmer switches. I cut the holes about two and one quarter inches away from each other, so when I put up the one inch trim on the inside, they don't butt up against each other. Repeated the same process for the center for my DP projector for nighttime heat if needed. Vacuumed up the mess that was created. Here's a ceiling plan for my light placement. Now to start the light trim for the inside interior. Traced out the lights tight to the dome. Drilled a hole to the inside of that line. Use the jigsaw to cut it out. I will save the cutouts so I can use them as plugs later. But this cut will be the inside diameter for my light trim. Then use my compass with a 1 inch measurement for my outside diameter of the light trim. Then proceeded to cut it out. I can't stand the wasted PVC board that this creates, but the end result inside the enclosure with the light trim really ties it all together. Use the outside diameter as a template to trace out my 8th inch chicken wire. Then went ahead and cut it out. Place it onto the light trim and use a small bead of hot glue. I do this in quarter sections so it gives me the opportunity to work with the glue when it's as liquid as possible. At a certain point your thumb works best, just proceed with caution so you don't burn yourself. Pre-drilled 8 holes about a half inch from the cutout. and set my 3 quarter inch screws into place. If you're doing this part by yourself, you can always do a couple dabs of hot glue so you can put it in its place or for better results, have somebody hold it up from the inside. Screwed it down in a star pattern so it would seal evenly. I like installing my lights this way because it allows the fixture to be recessed into the ceiling. This is my preferred way of installing lights because it maximizes space inside of the enclosure rather than installing a bracket to the top of the ceiling. Put a couple of handles on the cutouts from earlier so I can use them as plugs if ever needed. Measured and drilled some holes so I can mount the brackets for my Arcadia Pro T5 UVB fixture. 
and snapped it into place. I may have to back it off the light trim about an inch. I'll do some temp readings once the enclosure is up and running. Drill the hole for the cord. I also use the side of the drill bit to make the hole more of an oval shape. Fed the cord through the hole. And plugged it in. For my Arcadia Jungle Dawn, I wanted it at the front of the enclosure, but I didn't want it pointing straight down, so I cut one inch thick PVC trim board at a 45 degree angle. Use clear Sullivan cement to fuse it all together. And press the brackets into their spot, holding them down for about two minutes. Drilled pilot holes for the light mounts, and then screwed them in loosely. The Arcadia Jungle Dawn does great for plant growth and ambient light. I also stuck on some cord mounts to tie everything up real nice. The convenient thing with Arcadia is you can connect all the fixtures together. I made some measurements to where I was going to be putting my Miss King nozzles. Drilled a 5 8 hole. Installed the nozzles. Hopped up above the enclosure and started connecting my water lines together. To work myself around the light, I had to get a couple of 90 degree fittings. Then gave it a test run to make sure it was running as planned. Now for the fogger system. I used rubbing alcohol to clean off all the bulkheads, cut out some screen to fit, used some silicone around the rim of the bulkhead, placed on the screen mesh, Did another layer on top of the screen mesh, and then spread it out evenly to try and get a nice clean finish. Drilled a hole for my center bulkhead. Placed it into the hole. And used painter's tape to keep it from moving while I secured the top down. Hold some measurements from the center of the bulkhead to the back of the enclosure, so I knew where to drill my next two holes. I couldn't get my drill to fit straight between the rock ledge and the ceiling. I used the magnets again to target the spot where I wanted to drill so I can look from the inside of the enclosure and make sure the hole was going to be in the right place. Did the same thing for the third hole on the right side. Mocked up all the plumbing with half inch PVC pipe. Then did a few coats of black spray paint. Hung it to dry, then pressed it into the bulkheads. Attached an expandable hose that came with the fogger. Tightened it down with a hose clamp. Connected it to the top fill fogger. And filled it up with distilled water. I think it's important at this point to say that foggers aren't meant to be a fog chamber inside of your enclosure. It's simply meant to bump humidity. For video purposes, I run them on high, just so you can see the effect. But in reality, I run them on a low setting, three times a day, for five to ten minutes, depending on the size of the enclosure. To install my fans, I drilled a 5 8 inch hole. I make these fans by using a Miss King nozzle and a 40 millimeter fan. I have a full DIY video out now on how I do this. I'll post it in the top right corner and link it in the description below. But these things work great for air circulation. With the articulating arm of the Miss King nozzle, you can point the fans in any direction that you would like. I'm also working on a way on how to do this with an 80 millimeter fan and a different articulating arm, just in case that these fans aren't powerful enough for the size of this enclosure. Set up all my electrical to Govi smart plugs. It's great to have one centralized hub to operate your reptile room. I can break it all down by enclosure and have all my lights, fans, foggers, and features on a timer with specified days or the whole week if needed. 
I wanted to add a large size heat mat inside the hide just in case it got cold at night during the winter months. So I marked with a magnet where I wanted the drill so I can look on the inside of the hide to make sure it wouldn't hit anything. Drilled a hole. And inserted an inch and a half desk grommet in the hole. When I built the hide, I made sure the entrance was at least 20 inches wide. That way I can fit my heat mat inside through the opening with ease. Fed the cord through the desk grommet. I'll be using a thermostat set at my lowest temperature desired, so it'll kick on if it drops below that. I'll officially plug it in once the enclosure is up and running. I'll place the probe above the heat mat so it'll kick on if it drops to the set temperature and snap the desk grommet cap in place. From having it pitch dark in the morning, to having a dawn ambient light turn on, to a brighter light daylight cycle. Watching the drip oil cascade into place. The added atmosphere of the fogger enhancing the environment. It's a calming scene when in sync or flowing down one of the ledges. Air circulation benefiting the whole soon-to-be ecosystem. Having multiple basking spots so my reptile will be able to have options. The Miss King system is awesome to watch and has so many added benefits to this enclosure. To having it missed and then having the water droplets run off. A lot of work has gone into the ceiling alone to try and recreate a natural habitat and environment for my pet reptile. But when the foggers turn off and the daylight cycle ends, cutting out the lights, I know I created something to the best of my ability. Let me know what your favorite part of the video was down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and check out my Patreon. Your support is appreciated. For the first two videos of the series, check out this playlist right up here. And for the next video in the series, check it out right here, where I build a drainage layer for a large reptile likes to dig, finish the front, and install the glass. Thanks for watching.